welcome to another edition of Extra Butter. She came, she saw, she kicked it. It's Captain Marvel, number one at the box office. Brie Larson and Sam Jackson drop by to celebrate. Also, Kira Knightley in a period piece? This will never work, except the 600 other times it works. She'll be dropping by to talk about the aftermath. Also, if you liked Creed, you're gonna love Creed 2 because most people say it's pretty much the same movie. Michael B. Jordan talks about that and more on this Extra Butter! <laughs> Captain Marvel won at the box office. Lady yeah, Bauer, we salute you. Thank you. Hey, welcome to the show. We talk about movies pretty much the way you talk about movies. Our influencers today. You know her, you love her on YouTube. Uh, she taught me so much, like how to blend my cheekbones. Maria Gloria, where do we find learning. you? He's still learning, he's still learning. Maria Gloria. Over here, she is a travel blogger extraordinaire and likes movies. Kelly Savannah Deaton. Jane of all trades. <laughs> I'm that face, Kelly Savannah Deaton. Exactly. She'll show her rock on each and every episode. She wouldn't have it if not for Sam Jackson. We'll get to that in a minute. Thank you, uh, Sam. And over here, last but not least, she is a radio executive, a titan of the broadcast universe from Bonneville. It's Deanna Houston, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. Where are we um, Instagram at Miss Purple Rain. Got it. I'm at TV Marcus Allen, and now let's jump right into it. Captain Marvel conquering into the box office, exceeding some of the naysayers who said it wouldn't do so well. Are you surprised? No. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm Are not you surprised, surprised at all? I would have been surprised if it flopped. Like, I was waiting for this movie to like, be the blockbuster. Of course. Yeah. And it's the first female led Marvel Ooh. movie standalone film. So, of course, people have been waiting right. for this for a long time. Now, every time you say that, 60 trolls jump on to say, <laughs> uh, what about Electra? <laughs> Technically, Electra was meant. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Okay, right. First female led standalone film. Splitting hairs, I am. Now, Deanna, you have to admit that unlike most Marvel films where everybody's piling on going, it's going to be the best Marvel movie ever, this is the first one where you're getting a lot of hate. Did you yeah. notice that? I did notice it. I think one of the things that where the hate forms is that she is a woman and so yeah. they play on her emotional. Like, in order to control her powers, she has to control her emotions. And as women, it's like, they know that it's hard for us to yeah. even try to control that. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely played on that. That's one thing that I did not like about the movie. Art imitating life, imitating art, imitating life. We caught up with Sam Jackson and he actually revealed some things he found out about Brie with you, right? He did indeed. This is their third movie together. So they've been learning a lot about each other. Take a look. So you discover a lot of things about Captain Marvel throughout mm -hmm. the film and she discovers a lot of things about you. Right. So what's one thing you discovered about Brie Larson that you didn't already know before filming this movie? That I didn't already know? Uh, that she could sing. Oh. I didn't realize she had a pop singing career before she started acting until we got into this. So I love the 90s. I love everything about the 90s in this movie. You I miss do. Blockbuster? I do miss Blockbuster. Get I would totally here. go. I Come on, streaming's way better than Blockbuster. It is a lot easier. You can actually get movies in your sweats and stuff and, like that. And you don't have to worry about them being out of the movie you want to stream. That is true. So yeah. what's the one thing you miss from the 90s, if anything? Uh, my youth. My, what'd you say, my youth? <laughs> my youth. <laughs> so he hates Blockbuster, but I Brie know. Larson said the opposite? Yeah, she misses Blockbusters and other things in the 90s. So what did Captain Marvel teach you? Mm, I think just getting the chance to be her for so many hours every day, it just, that sense of inner strength and ownership of yourself just sticks with you. I don't know, I think it does something to your brain where you like start to believe it because you're just living it. Um, so even when the movie was over, there's a certain like rootedness I feel in myself now. So what's one thing that you would bring back if you could from the 90s or one thing you miss? I, I miss Blockbuster. Right, wasn't it fun to go I in and it. actually like pick out a movie, not just use your remote? It yeah. was like an event, it was like going to see it. And it was kind of stressful, like you didn't know if you could get what you wanted. <laughs> I do miss it. Right, and in the movie, this cat, everyone's talking about Goose, this cat's amazing. Was that just one cat? Like, I wanna know the no, information. No, four cats. Four cats? Yeah, four And cats. how was that acting with a cat? I'm severely allergic, so not oh, ideal for no. me. <laughs> yeah, oh, but he's super cute. They were great, they did an awesome job. So if you're one of the few people who haven't seen it, there's a cat in this movie, and I didn't realize how big of a part the cat might as well be top billing in this movie. The cat's right? amazing. I was sad that the cat, it's actually four cats in the movie, but the one took the lead. I'm surprised they didn't have the cat for you to talk to or something. I love that cat. That cat is the coolest cat ever. Goose. Yeah, what a cool cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said, uh, in theory, it's a Oh, did I just put? Oh. Hey, did they bleep that? 
It's okay, they bleep that. Okay, so they hear better. It. Marble Look. ninjas are gonna come down from the right. sun. Here, I'm gonna Kick say it again. Son of a <laughs> Mother <laughs> The uh, cat is really a <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I liked this movie. I'll go on record as saying I didn't love this movie, but you know, it's like, Here's what I always say about a bad Marvel movie. It's like pizza. Even yeah. a relatively bad pizza is still okay. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's I say about sex. Oh, really? <laughs> there you go. There you go. And it's a prequel. This movie's cool because it sets up the entire Avengers mm -hmm. shebang. So that's yeah. why I liked it. You're just going to breeze right past what she yep. just said? Yeah, we're going to breeze right past I need to ask some personal <laughs> questions. Where exactly are you getting your pizza? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Anyway, all right. So what's your exactly. summary? What do you think? My summary is it's a good woman oh kick butt God. movie. Yeah. And you know, because of that, I like it. And I like how it has sci-fi intertwined with Marvel fans, intertwined with girls. I just like, you know, yeah. kick butt women movies. So I'm all for it. Go see it. Go check it out. Big round of applause for Lady Power at the Woo! movies. Yes. With that said, I want to get one male's perspective, only because you know him, you love him. Uh, his reviews have been in Rolling Stone magazine, LA Times, New York Times, and everywhere in between. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sean Edwards. Hey, hey, what's going on, Sean? Hey, what's up, Mark? What's up, everybody? All right, Sean, so, so uh, people loving Captain Marvel, some not as much as uh, others. What say you? You know what? It's a good one for Marvel. They made so many movies in their cinematic universe. It's about time they represented for the ladies. That's a yeah. big That's right. Uh, and towards you look for a lot of people out there to go to movies. They want to see people on screen that look like them. They want that person to be respectful. They want that person to like really deliver the way they wanted to see her deliver on screen. And Marvel really did a good job of cleaning up some of the back history of the comic book to actually make her more suitable for modern times. So a lot of props for that and a lot of props for Ruby Larson. It's the reason why she won an Oscar. She's actually a really good actress. You know, I love the relationship between she and Nick Fury. I love this time we, we see more of Nick Fury. I love the. Uh, I, I love the. Movie. And I love the '90s. I mean, you you grew up in the '90s, so that had to be yeah, awesome yeah. for you. Yeah, no, it's the, um, the the chemistry between Brie Larson and Samuel Jackson was the best part of the movie. I love the give and take. I love the banter. I could see two or three sequels with just those two in the movie. Yeah. And Brie and Sam were killing it, man. It was, it was, it was really, that part of the movie was really fun to watch. A lot of people have asked me about Avengers Endgame, and so I'll let you answer this question in the most politically non-spoiler way possible. <laughs> Does this movie drop any hints at any given point for Endgame? It drops a ton. If you're a real Avengers fan, it drops a ton of hints, and it's a great setup to what we're going to see in a few weeks. I want to know yes. what your opinion was of the real star of the movie, The Cat. Talk about performance. Talk about performance. You know what? I love the cat so much, I now have three kittens at home. <laughs> oh, there you have it. The ever expanding family of Sean Edwards, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. Sean, yes. where do we find you online? Man, find me everywhere. S Edwards, K is a kitten, C is a cat. That's <laughs> <laughs> Edwards, K, C, man. Good guy, Sean Edwards. Yes. Love Sean. Thanks for hanging out with us, Sean. Uh, all right, we can't sit around and talk about comic book movies all day long. I know geeks like me would like that, but what's better than comic book movies? Sex! <laughs> I love it. Yes. All went the same direction. We'll be talking about pizza, not so much, but the aftermath features a lot of the aforementioned and the queen of period pieces, Kira Knightley, yeah. joins us next. Extra butter, time to talk about, you know, they can't all be comic book movies, so no. we should talk about the other fair, like Akira Knightley period piece. Oh, oh. we don't know that at all. I know. <laughs> yeah, that would Akira never work. Knightley a fine piece? Well, no. That'll That'll never That's happen. Where she she shines the best, though, you guys. Yeah, yeah. And don't think this is just a war movie mm -hmm. and think I'm not going to go see this because Rachel. at the center of it, right. it's about Rachel. love, betrayal, grief, yeah. and people. I freaking was mad at her. I like, know. Oh, she I know. So and for Jason Clark, this man has gone through the ringer, right? right? All the women in his movies always betray him mm -hmm. and sleep with somebody else. Mudbound, Great yeah. Gatsby, uh, All God. I See Is You. It's always Jason yeah. Clark. He's I was not a, putting it out. You're right. right. And I, I thought <laughs> we might be plot spoiling, but no. you pretty much get that in the trailer. It's yeah. after World War II. England is still occupying Germany. Uh, Jason Clark and Kira Knightley, a married husband and wife, end up taking 
hanging over this guy's house. A hot guy. And then she kind of falls along with the guy. We'll get to the scars guard factor in a moment. Uh, in the meantime, Kira Knightley, do you like her in general? I love Kira Knightley so much. I'm such a big fan of her. And like Kelly said, she really is the queen of period pieces. Like, no, you can't say period piece without thinking of Kira Knightley. Yeah, right. You just, you don't. That's her. Yeah, that's, that is her. She, She's not unlike camera guy Mark. She's probably got a drawer full of laced bodices. Ooh. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying. Uh, anyway, I caught up with her to tell her pretty much what we were just talking about. Her and period pieces go together like Dibs. chocolate Dibs. and peanut butter. Take a look. Pizza and pizza. I have to reveal something uh, that if ever you wanted this type of focus group, I have to tell you. I was going through customs with a, another journalist, yeah. and he arrived at the stand, and they said, are you here for business or pleasure? And he said, business. What's your business? He said, I'm seeing a film. What kind of film? Uh, it's a Kira Knightley film. What kind of Kira Knightley film? It's a period piece. And the customs agent said, all Kira Knightley films are period pieces. Well, that's not exactly true. See? It's nearly true, but it's not, <laughs> exactly, not exactly true. true. Exactly. But you know, there's a lot of them. Before we wrap things up, I want to get some Kira Knightley trivia out of the yeah. way. Is it true that your name was misspelled? Yes. It's meant to be K-I-E, and my mom, my mom misspelled it on my birth certificate, so it's K-E-I. Didn't hold you back. Well, I'm dyslexic, so maybe oh, that's see? why. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why. But um, but no, no, you know, it's just a spelling mistake. That's all right, isn't that's it? That's where it started. Yeah. Uh, I've just come from Pinewood Studios. I got to see the last shot of the new Star Wars movie. Ooh. And do you carry like a badge of pride the fact that you touched the Star Wars universe? I did. You know, I did touch the badge. Yes, the badge. No, I touched the Star Wars universe. I don't have a badge. I should have a badge. <laughs> they should have an emblem. They should. I don't remember it though. This is the. Pro I was twelve, and I don't remember it. You've done some stuff since then. I have, but isn't that annoying that you've been in a Star Wars thing and you? The only thing I remember is falling off the back of. Um, of a, of a golf cart when you and McGregor was on the golf cart. I just remember the embarrassment. Basically, the embarrassment is seared into my mind, but nothing else about the experience. <laughs> That's why you don't remember it. You blocked it. Blocked it out. Yeah, <laughs> completely blocked it out. <laughs> you have one job to do, and you always bring up Star Wars. What is always with you? you we talked about learn. a lot of other stuff. <laughs> yeah. I talked about everything but in there. just leave the Star Wars leave, at home. Right. Be a it's nerd a, yeah. somewhere else. This is yeah. like a time or place. All right, as fanboy, as nerd boy as I <laughs> am, I'll go ahead and be honest with you. You know what I really wanted to talk about? It's True a, Blood? No, I, well, I wanted to talk about the sex scenes in this movie Woo, because, yeah. look, I, I, <laughs> tell me if I crossed the line here or not. You did. It, it, no, <laughs> is this not one of the most realistic love-making scenes you've ever seen in a movie? Yeah, yeah it sure yeah. is. And someone asked him about that, and yeah. he said, luckily we worked together for about three weeks to a month before they right. just put us there. And he's like, we really trust each other, and we really enjoyed it. And then he hesitated, and he said, because of the narration of the film leading yeah. up to oh, it. He's oh, like, but we were oh. so excited about it. I'm like, I bet you were, sir. Yeah. I bet you were. And by the way, you guys, when she says someone asked him about it, that someone was me. I am the only one who had the journalistic acumen to ask him. I asked him nothing about that. Mark. I did instead. Oh, I talked to him about lingonberries, those things that you buy at Ikea. Oh. Want to know why? Because why? he's Swedish. He's Swedish. Respect. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, if you were to call someone, or if someone was saying, why should I see this film, how would you answer that? I, uh, to me, it felt very, reading the script and, and, and subsequently the, the novel, which, is, which I highly recommend, by the way, sure. by Ridian Brook. Um, it, it was a de depiction of the war, that, or the aftermath of the war, that I hadn't read before. Because um, it, it avoids all the tropes. It, it avoids the, the stereotypes of good side versus bad side. and. You know, we were all the good guys, and all the Germans were the evil guys. And it, you understand the the depth and the complexity and the suffering on both sides, um, and 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 how these broken individuals, uh, f you know, find humanity in in, in, in each other and, 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 and that connection. It really is remarkable. As we wrap it up, I have to ask you a question that you might be uniquely qualified to answer. I've recently become addicted to lingonberry because they sell it at our IKEA. Is this really a thing? Is this something you grew up with? Absolutely. Lingonberries? Yeah. It's incredible. I love lingonberries. I eat them all the time. Okay. We the eat them like with oatmeal, but also with our meatballs. Like some, some lingonberries with your meatballs and some, some uh, pickles. If I'm going to eat Swedish, I want to eat legit. Yeah. And now I know I am. Good to see you. <laughs>
put him down in my section of guys that I like talking to because that guy could have punched me in the face for asking a question <laughs> that stupid and yeah. he leaned right into it. Because he's beautiful. a sweet yeah, he's guy. Nice. He even yeah. brought up meatballs. There you go. <laughs> Swedish men are just so respectful yes. and yeah. so nice and so... You can learn a few things from them. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh. yeah Skarsgård <laughs> has a number of things that I will never have in ways that I'll never have. I say this is a fantastic date movie. Yes, yes, yes? Yes, yeah, 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 for, yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, even though it looks like a period piece that so. might settle into the boring, it doesn't. Yeah, it's nope. as romantic as The Notebook. You're going to like it in that way. Forbidden and also, love. If, if you are on a date, yes, if you're on a date, I think it's going to spike. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. yeah for sure. When you see that lane, yeah. You know. <laughs> you know who shouldn't see this movie? Tim Tebow, if he wants to maintain his status. <laughs> and I bring that up because Tim Tebow joining us next to talk about his very first movie venture ever, Run the Race. He's the producer, and it's next. Hey, welcome back. It is Extra Butter. Before we continue, we should probably shout out the men and women oh, serving America, the Armed Forces Network, and 168 million yeah. U.S. Yeah. homes serving yeah. those people out there, putting life online for us. Thanks Thank for watching. Thanks for being a part. You know, and we got to, you know, we think about this movie. Captain Marvel leans into the military. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the aftermath yes. as well. Yes. So we it thank does. you for not making the movies, just for making our country safe and safe. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks All for right. our freedom. Never enough thanks. There you go. Uh, big patriot, Tim Tebow. Let's talk about him now. <laughs> this guy decided to play football, then switched over to baseball now, in case right. you haven't heard. Yeah. And now switching over to movie producer. Mm. Wow. And he still doesn't have sex? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why is it? That's what I'm saying. That's the switch he needs to make, right? I'm confused. All right, moving on. You're probably wondering, did I bring up that in the interview? I hope not. Look, I I tiptoed as close to the line to asking that question as possible. You can see me going, no, I can't, but but I watch. The snapshot of what it would be to be a young athlete on the road is not necessarily one that I think the average person would say, yeah, that's probably going to be a person of faith. However, you shook that up and showed them that there is that way to do it. Could the same be said for making films? Like the snapshot of what it means to be a film producer is not exactly a man of faith. Well, I, I think for me, I, I, there was no goal of trying to be a, a, a film producer. The goal was to be able to tell a story. And I didn't necessarily even want to get into the movie industry. I wanted to encourage people. Right. But if we can use this avenue as a way to do that, um, then why not? And if you can find all the right people that are great at what they do, because I don't know everything of what I'm doing in this industry, right. I just want to tell a story. And so I just tried to, to bring people together. And I love doing that. It's something I'm really passionate about is, is just bringing people together so we can be on the same team. And, and, and kind of if, if you're with us on the same goal of encouraging people, let's figure out a way to do that. Well, you knocked it out of the park. No pun intended. <laughs> um, you're about to get married. Yes, sir. I'd like to give you some advice. I've been married sure. over a quarter of a century. Congratulations. Uh, you're going to have disagreements if you're human. But before you hit the bed, before you lay that head down to sleep, make sure you tell your wife that it was all your fault and that you were completely wrong. <laughs> I think that's really good advice. Perfect. Good to see Appreciate you, Appreciate it, Mark. Thanks Thank you time. so much. Cheers. Thank you. Really, that's the best advice you could give. No wonder you travel all the time and your wife's okay with it. You just, you were, t- I've never seen you tiptoe. Right. So Try to like, you're, you're really yeah. trying to skirt around the question right. that right. we right. are. I know. You want me to keep it real? You want to yeah. keep it real? Yeah. Right. Here's how to keep it real. I would say I've been happily married for a quarter of a century, years one through four, years nine through 12. Oh. 18 was okay. And I would have also said, look, you're doing it all wrong. If you, if you live in my life, safe abstinence for marriage, where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the time. Hey, at least one person here at the table is probably saving themselves for Michael B. Jordan. Ooh, I can three. That All of us. Yeah, <laughs> even four. Right. Four of us. <laughs> All right, coming up next, Michael B. Jordan talks about Creed II. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. It is Extra Butter. We can't hang out in just a swanky movie theater all of our lives. Sometimes we have it. to watch movies at home. Now is when we talk about the movies I highly suggest and they highly suggest. Yeah. How are we feeling about Creed 2? Love Creed 2. Yes. Love Tell Michael us B. About Jordan. It. Like, it's more like kind of like Creed 1, but that's okay. Right. Like, that's fine. Like, anytime there's like a buff man. <laughs> A mm. beautiful black yes, man yeah, like yeah, Michael yeah, B. Jordan. Mm, mm-hmm. It plays a lot like the Rocky movie with Ivan Drago. It's, it's, I mean, yes. if I'm really honest with you guys, it's it's that movie in modern times. It's basically the same thing. But it hit me emotionally because in this movie, you really see Stallone being like, this is your time now. Yes. You're not going to be in my shadow. 
keep doing what you do, right. I'm not going to be, you know, that overpowering guy anymore. The you know baton is yeah. passed. The baton yeah. has passed. As passionate as you guys are about Michael B. Jordan, he was about the making of this movie. Take a look. Rocky's on board, you know. Uh, his mom is on board, knows he's doing. His wife is on board, you know. He has a, a, a daughter now, somebody who needs him, who he has to come back to because he's not going to repeat his father's mistakes. So he's kind of came to this understanding with everybody in a circle, and then it's a team. Like, everybody's fighting Drago, not just Adonis. And I think that's the kind of support that he needs in order to win. And if he loses, then he knows that it wasn't just him. He's not fighting alone. And I, I think that that's something really powerful. All right, so moving on, a great family comedy, Instant Family. Now, this is a movie, like, if you watch the trailer of it, it almost leans into the fact it's gonna be like Daddy Daycare yeah. or Daddy's Home, when yeah. in fact, this is a much deeper movie. Yeah, 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 I haven't cried in a movie in a long time, and there's a lot of sweet touching, I'm not a yeah. crier, but there's a lot of sweet touching moments, and they really did a great job at really researching how families, mm -hmm. how you adopt kids and yeah. everything. Right. It was to the T. I talked to Marky Mark. Never call him that. Mark Wahlberg and Rose Byrne about parenting for real. Take a look. Mark, what was the greatest surprise of being a parent? When you, you're going to become a parent, you think it's going to be one thing, but then there are surprises. What was the first big surprise? It's just every day is different. Every day is different. The amount of, first of all, the amount of love that you feel. I think that was probably the biggest thing. Like, I thought, okay, I had 15 nieces and nephews before I had a child, right? Wow. And I thought, wow, I really love my nieces and nephews. Yeah. Then I thought, okay, I got this little baby. And then I'm thinking, if my niece or my nephew did anything to harm my child, no. oh, I'd do some bad things to them. <laughs> so I thought, wow, that, that, you know, that really kind of showed me the difference between having your own child. Yeah. Uh, Rent Instant Family, I don't suggest you buy it, but Go see Captain Marvel and yeah, celebrate yeah. the ladies. Girl power. Go see it on the big screen. Give Brie Larson some love. Yes. That's right. Speaking of ladies, celebrate Maria Gloria. Thanks Woo! for hanging out with us. Yay! Celebrate Kelly Thank Savannah Eaton. Deanna Houston. And celebrate yourselves. Let's keep this party going. Let's keep talking about the movies. Follow us on Facebook. It is Extra Butter TV. Have a good one. Bye. Popcorn. Extra Butter. And Popcorn. Juke on. Funk.